Hi there, do you know how to slice cheese in Houdini? Check this! Hi, in today's video we will create this interactive bullion tool that could bring up a lot of creative and artistic control over our fractures. If you find this video useful in some way, please consider donating through my Patreon page. This will help me create more and better content for you in the future. Now without further ado, let's get right into Houdini. Hey everyone, today's video is all about bullion and how to artistic control your fractured pieces. So the main idea here is that you'll be drawing uh, curves at the screen plane and those in turn will be used to generate uh, cut planes which then are boolean against your input geometry. So uh, we, we are also going to see how to auto close uh, this curve so that you can create holes like this. Okay, so this is a cool uh, way to, to uh, create your first level uh, fracture where you can really have fine control over where your geometry will break. You can then send this over to another uh, fracture pass where you can generate your high resolution geometry. Okay, so let's get started uh, with a simple tube here. So I'll create uh, a geometry uh, tube with end caps and let me get a smaller radius. And I'm going to move that uh, to move that a little bit so we stay at the ground. So we use height as a reference and divide by two, okay? So we have this. So uh, we are going to use uh, the, the draw swap, draw curve swap. And uh, for the moment, we don't need to create any attributes on that. So let's uncheck that. And the projection uh, mode is going to be set to screen plane, okay? So you can see you are now drawing uh, and it, it orients to the screen. So um, now that you have this uh, this stroke, we can just uh, resample that, and let's also visualize the points so we can see uh, the resolution. So let's say we went point zero five, and uh, then we what you can do is to poly extrude that. And let's use the extrusion mode uh, by normal. And let's say distance is two. Okay, so that's what you have. So we have uh, halfway uh, through through the object. We need to do the other side. So let's do another poly extrude and just uh, give it a negative distance. And then you have both. It's just uh, a matter of merging bo both. Okay, and finally, we are going to fuse the middle point here. So let's start fuse. And that's really, that's uh, not, not more than this. So we can just drop boolean now. So we're going to boolean the tube with the planes. And uh, set B as uh, a surface because it's an open, uh, open plane and operation will be shatter and uh, we are not going to the, the triangulate polygons so and also we are going to uncheck collapse time scene adjacent edges so here we have our geometry and we also uh, have two, two separated pieces let's visualize that with an exploded view node so we can check it's working and let's turn down the scale here and that's really it. Now you can just, just draw your uh, cut planes and it will slice your geometry. Okay. So we can visualize that um, better with, uh, let's color code the pieces. So for that, let's drop a connectivity node and uh, set that to primitive and the attribute name, I'm going to call that Island. Okay. So let's drop a color node. And color type will be random from attribute, and I'm going to uh, use the island attribute. And the class is primitive. Okay, so now you can see you have your pieces here. So now that you have that, uh, we can just uh, 
assemble that to get some package geometry and is going to throw us an error because we already have the name attribute so I'm going to attribute delete that so we have this working and uh, before that we are going to also drop a normal node so that it computes normals okay so with this we can al already uh, you can already uh, input that into a dot network and let's create something really simple here so just a gravity force and a rigid body solver with a packet rigid body object and that will be our first contest geometry okay um, other than that let's just drop a, a, a simple ground plane so we can get something to collide against and let's merge that to the solver and just put that uh, first on on the queue okay so if you play that we already have our pieces working uh, you can then go and experiment with the attributes but for now I'm going to just uh, use that as a fun playground okay so you can then go ahead and cut your geometry and do whatever you want and you can see the boolean swap is always very robust uh, and you can of course do the, all the crazy uh, simulations so now we're going to see how to handle the holes because uh, let's actually just swap the geometry real quick let's put the box instead and let's move that up okay and also I'm going to uh, squeeze that a bit all right so uh, let's clean our strokes here and also uh, untemplate this and let's create a hole here and you can see uh, we are not getting another piece and that's because our curve is still open so how can we close that well uh, let's start with uh, with this uh, simple curve and resample that we can then uh, create a connectivity node so that we can separate the curves and let's uh, make that a primitive attribute and attribute name is going to be uh, named Alan okay so that with that we'll create a loop uh, a for loop oh, or we can also create directly uh, for each connected pieces and it is going to automatically drop this uh, connectivity node for us so let's use that instead So for, for each curve, because we might have open or closed curves, let's also create that just for you to see the difference. And for each curve, we are going to check. Um, the main thing here is to check uh, what is the distance between the endpoints. And it, if it less than a, a de defined threshold, then we close that. Okay. So for that, let's do a little bit of ranging here. So attribute Rango. I will run over a uh, detail only once and let's uh, get the start and end points so factor pt1 will be a point attribute at the input geometry uh, the attribute name is p and the point in index is zero point two same thing but uh, the point index will be end points of the input geometry minus one so get the, la la uh, the last uh, point okay so the distance between the two float dist will be pt1 minus pt2 um, the order doesn't matter because we're just interested in, in the length of the vector so length sorry length okay so we get the distance between the two points we have we need to compare that against the threshold so if our distance is 
less than or equal to uh, a channel, uh, let's call that auto close this. Then we are going to set a detail attribute that is going to be set at the input geometry and the name is close, uh, value is one for true and uh, the mode is set. Okay, let's create the, the channel and let's set the distance to 0.1. All right, so the next step is to, uh, trans uh, to transform, uh, to delete the curves and stay with the point only. So let's drop an add node we are going to delete geometry, delete geometry but keep points and now we are going to recreate the curves again so we drop another add node and this time we are going to polygons and by group all points so that uses the, the point order and uh, we are going to create a, an expression and in the closed uh, parameter here if you check that it's going to close every curve we're going to just use this expression to read this detail attribute called close okay so detail we're going to read from the previous node which is add three we could give uh, it better names but that this would do for now so we are going to read from add three and we are going to uh, read the close attribute at the point index zero because we only have one that is a global attribute and let's apply and accept that and now we can see it only closes which uh, the curves that has uh, point endpoints points close together okay so after that we can uh, we need to uh, convert that into lines again and for that I'm going to use the polypath node Okay, and then we can do the usual thing. Uh, we can uh, just uh, do the poly extrude again. So let's reorganize that here. And we can uh, just uh, reconnect things. Okay, so. Um, now we have this okay so we can check if this is all working let's clear that again and just uh, draw a circle and you can see it auto closes and creates the hole inside this this box and if you simulate that we can see it is working properly okay so that's how you can create this kind of stuff it's really really simple and it's so powerful and uh, together with this uh, robust boolean node in Houdini that makes a great way to, uh, to get this first level of control over your, your fractures. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and again if you like my videos and if you find those uh, interesting, uh, be sure to check my Patreon page and, and also help me uh, continue developing those for you. Okay. So I see you in the next one, until there, uh, have a great time, bye!